more uh, detail. Continuous growth. We said it happens for the material with what? Low bonding energy, like nickel, right? Like nickel. High coordination number, but uh, low bonding, low latent heat per mole. Okay? For nickel, material like these types of metal, they have, because of the low bonding energy, naturally you can imagine they would have a high what? Vacancy concentration at the solid liquid interface. Make sense? The bonding energy is low means what? You don't need a lot of energy to break bond. You don't need a lot of energy to break bond means you are going to have a lot of either broken bonds or missing atom means vacancy. Make sense? At where? Near the solid liquid interface. Make sense? The bonding energy is low means you can have many dangling bonds. It doesn't matter that much. And at the same time, you can have many missing atoms, so-called vacancy. Because whenever you break bond, you, are, you have to spend energy, but you don't have to spend much energy because the bonding energy is low, okay? Because of this, I would have so-called a diffuse interface and the activation energy and the activation energy for the growth process is pretty much determined by the what? Activation energy for diffusion. I don't have to go through a barrier. Pretty much how much barrier I have to overcome for diffusion, for the atom to come to here, that's it. That's about it. And in liquid, that's quite often very small number. And because of this, this is what we are going to have. We are plotting what, roughly? Gibbs free energy versus kind of location. One side we have liquid, the other side we have solid. This is what we call solidification, right? One side is solid, the other side the liquid. And then between the solid and the liquid, this is our delta GV, the volume free energy, right? That's how you are driving force for the liquid to go to solid. Remember, we are doing this what? Below, above the melting point or below the melting point? We are doing solidification below the melting point. As a result, the liquid should have higher energy than solid. That's your driving force, makes sense? But before you can go from the liquid to the solid, you have to overcome a normally a barrier, except in this case, the activation of the barrier is very low. How much low? It's just uh, your diffusion activation energy within the liquid, very low value. And as a result, we would have pretty fast interfacial movement, pretty fast interfacial movement, pretty fast for the solid to grow, okay? Or for the atom to jump from the liquid side to the solid side, I'll rearrange, okay? And the driving force for solidification, we said that's our delta GV term. Delta GV is L, latent heat, divided by Tm times what? Delta T, that's your undercooling. I means undercooling right at the interface, okay? That's your driving force. Then L, we mentioned, is the latent heat. Delta T is our undercooling at the interface. Then the velocity, how fast does solid grow or how fast does this interface move? The velocity, quite often if you think, is proportional in many cases to velocity is proportional to your driving force. The proportion constant is your mobility. So the, if the velocity V is proportional to your delta GV is your driving force, right? Drives, what drives from liquid to become solid? Velocity is proportional to your driving force, proportional to your undercooling. Driving because driving force is proportional to undercooling. And because of this, we said the mobility is high, 
Okay, the mobility is high and we don't need a large driving force. As a result, for many of the metals at the interface, I need very little temperature difference. For it to grow right at the surface, for once the nucleation happens at the surface, the I don't need a large driving force. It will just quickly go. A very small delta T, very small under cooling will give me a very small driving force, but that's enough for my interface to move at pretty rapid speed or rate. As a result, what people observed is if you probe at a solid liquid interface during it grows, that temperature is quite often is very close to your melting temperature. Because of what? Because of the high mobility of the interface. Because it's very easy to add atoms here. Because my diffusion barrier is very small within the liquid. Okay? This is for the so-called continuous growth. 